Harvard scientists create gene editing tools that could rival CRISPR. Move over CRISPR, the retrons are coming. Scientists have created new gene editing tools that could outperform CRISPR. Recently, you may have come across these news titles. Is it really that big of a deal? Should current CRISPR companies be afraid of this competition? In today's video, I'll give you my thoughts and opinion. Let's dive in. Hello, my name is Marat, I'm a PhD student in medicinal chemistry and on this channel I'm sharing my opinion about biotech stocks. So if you're interested in this type of content, you're welcome to subscribe. And before we start, just want to remind you that this is not financial advice and this is just my opinion and I share it with you as I would share it with my friends. Now let's dig a bit deeper and see how close to the truth these news titles actually are. And I prefer to start with original source. An original source is article in scientific journal Proceeding of National Academy of Science of United States of America or PNAS for short and unfortunately this article is behind the paywall so I wouldn't be able to show it to you but I'll leave a link in the description if you have access you're welcome to read it firsthand. First of all I want to mention that authors chose to publish it in PNAS compared to more prestigious journals like Science or Nature. And actually, if you look at the original CRISPR papers, they all were published in Science. And why I'm saying that PNAS is less prestigious? So in scientific communities, there is one metric that is kind of easy to measure and it will give you an idea about how prestigious journal is. So it's how frequently these articles are cited by other scientific papers. And it's actually condensed to just a single number, which is called impact factor. And for PNAS, as you can see, it's 9.4, while for science, it's 41.8. For me, this is first indirect evidence that this may be not as groundbreaking as newspapers are trying to sell it. And talking about authors of this paper, the leading author is George Church. And if you watched my previous videos, you may be familiar that George Church is co-founder of Editor's Medicine. And I'm not going to be surprised if this technology actually will evolve to reach the market in one way or another. It may be added to editors' medicine portfolio of intellectual property and editors will benefit from this eventually. If you're looking at the title of the original paper, it doesn't say anything about CRISPR. It, it reads as follows. High throughput functional variant screens via in vivo production of single-stranded DNA. So nothing about CRISPR, nothing about application of this technology as a gene editing tool that could rival CRISPR. Okay, just want to make it clear. Now let's talk about the content of this article. And this article is focused on retrons. And retrons are similar to CRISPR in a way. They also just some sequences of DNA that can be seen in bacteria. And they also seems to be used as a defense mechanism, just as CRISPR was initially found in bacteria as a defense mechanism against viruses. The main focus of article is application of these retrons to produce as many mutants of E. coli bacteria, which is very common bacteria that scientists love to use for all the experiments, and create as many mutants as possible in the short period of time. So they just want to produce big library with different mutants and then trying to observe which mutation causing which effect so basically, they're just trying to gather as much data as possible in a short period of time. And they're not focused on precision. They're not focused on making some single little tweaks that are relevant to medicine. They just want to create big library and see what they will find in these new mutant variations. This technology could be applied to a development of new antibiotic drugs, for instance. So if they notice that one of the mutants is resistant to a specific antibiotic, and they can pinpoint which DNA change is actually causing this resistance, they can go backward and see what kind of changes has to be made to antibiotic to avoid this resistance in the first place. So this is very useful, but this is more like a tool for scientists. It's not gene editing tool for creating new medicines, at least not yet and not in the nearest future. And here I've explained why. I don't believe that in the nearest future it's going to be any rivalry between retrons and CRISPR. 
The main reason why I don't believe that Retrons anytime soon will be knocking on the CRISPR door because they were not shown to work in human cells or in any mammalian cells. And mammalian cells are way more complicated than bacteria that this E. coli that it was shown to work for. And even to make retrons work in bacteria, these bacteria were modified quite heavily. I'm going to read you a piece from the news article that was actually released by Harvard itself. Initially, less than 0.1% E. coli bearing retron recombinant system incorporated the desired mutation. So, which means that initially when they try to apply it without any modification to E. coli, incorporation of the desired DNA change was 0.1%, which is basically useless. Then they say to improve this disappointing initial performance, team made several genetic tweaks to bacteria. First, they inactivated cell natural mismatch repair machinery, which correct DNA replication errors and could therefore be fixing desired mutation before they were able to pass on the next generation. They also inactivated two bacteria genes that code for exonucleases, enzymes that destroy free-floating SS DNA. These changes dramatically increase proportion of bacteria that incorporated retron sequence to more than 90% of population. So this is may sound good that, oh yeah, 90% of population was having this genetic engineering that they want to make. But then if you look at these changes that enable this 90% efficiency, they basically switched off natural repair mechanism for bacteria. And this, in my opinion, can cause future undesirable mutations. Because when your cells actually exposed to some external sources of DNA damage and this repair mechanism that they switched off is absent, it can cause mutation in no time, but naturally it would be fixed by this machinery, but they just switched it off. So this is not really applicable to anywhere apart from laboratory and these pure science experiments. Here is another major drawback that has to be addressed before we can say that retrons are able to rival CRISPR in any way. And it actually was noted by paper authors. Certain pitfalls and challenges remaining, however, the continuous replication dependent nature of RLR, which is shortening for Retrons Library Combinering, so this is just technique that they used in this article, over multiple generations is instrumental to its effectiveness, but may limit its utility in certain organisms where it's undesirable. It means that Retrons doing DNA editing during the cell division, and in human body, some cells divide once a year, some of them divide way more frequently, of course, but some cells don't divide at all. This will be a major obstacle for retrons if they ever to be applied in human cells. Overall, I believe you have to take these headlines with grain of salt because you have to understand that media is in the same situation as any other content creator here on YouTube or any other platform. And media is fighting really hard to get your attention. And this is why they don't mind to use these clickbait titles and even if they know that this story is not as big as they're trying to make it, it's kind of still relevant and if you clicked on this and read it through, they achieve their goal. So you have to take this into consideration always. And I don't mind competition for CRISPR. If some new technology will be on the market that could perform better than CRISPR, it's all good for us because new companies will be created and more people will be able to benefit from this technology. But in my opinion, with this Retrons article, it's not as big of a deal, at least not right now. And if it will be applied in human cells and will be somehow able to avoid these limitations that I mentioned today, then yeah, we'll talk again about it. And also remember, I told you in the beginning that leading author on this paper is George Church, who is co-founder of Editors Medicine. And if this technology will be ever viable for human cells gene editing, it may be added to Editors Medicine portfolio and then additive medicine will benefit from it. So, and maybe even no new companies will be created, but this is very, very far away from right now. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content about genomic revolution and biotech stocks. And I'll see you in the next one.